Hi everybody, we're here at Porkfest 2015 and this is a panel about free aid. Free aid is a mutual aid organization that um, helps provide volunteer first aid here at Porkfest, 24-7 coverage for the whole week of Porkfest. And um, a lot of people utilize our, you know, make use of the service that we provide um, by you know, coming over and uh, receiving first aid from our volunteers. It's all done on a completely free and voluntary basis, so our volunteers have medical skills and uh, they volunteer their time to help people out at Porkfest. Um, and we do accept donations, but they're definitely not required. Um, we just help anybody who needs help. And uh, that could be up to and including referring them to the nearest medical center. You know, we don't try to sort of be the hero and take on more than we can more than just beyond first aid stuff. Um, but I think it's really nice to have this available for people at Porkfest because they, you know, you do get bumps and ticks and scrapes and, you know, rashes over the week. And it's cool to have people there who can sort of help out with that. So uh, I'm Stephanie Murphy. I'm the director of operations at Free Aid. It sounds like a really official title, but basically it means that I have all this, the equipment and I set up the tent when we get here at Port Fest Week. Um, I've been with Free Aid since the beginning, which was uh, five years ago in 2010. This is actually our, four, our fifth year providing uh, volunteer first aid here at Port Fest. And we started from just a tiny organization, you know, just of, of two basically two people. That was Teresa Warmke and Garland West who founded Free Aid because uh, they they wanted to, you know, sort of contribute to the Porkfest community and have first aid services available um, and wanted to explore this model of mutual aid where they could be provided on a voluntary basis without people, you know, having to pay. Um, just sort of experimenting a little bit with, uh, you know, I have some ideas in left libertarianism. You know, not everything has to be like exchange money for a service sometimes we can go a little more a little more um you know a little more reciprocity a little more mutual benefit <laughs> and in addition and you know i would say when you come to ems in particular not everything has to be done by the state or by a private organization licensed as the monopoly to operate in that area um so we're kind of hitting both directions right we're saying we're not the state and we're not so a business enterprise we're, um, we're pushing at the boundaries of mutual aid. And I think building a model that can be copied in other places and expand into to more than EMS at this event. In fact, we do cover other events, don't we? Yes, yeah, Free Aid has covered a, a bunch of other events in the past. Uh, I would say Porkfest is our heavy, most heavily utilized, uh, the event where people most heavily utilize our services because, well, a lot of people are camping and they just didn't bring you know, a lot of first aid supplies. And it's also a big event that's growing every year. But we have covered, uh, you know, various other Bitcoin conventions. We've uh, done done talks about the concepts that Josh was just mentioning about mutual aid and things like that. Um, and by the way, I just want to introduce the other gentleman up here. This is Josh Katz. And uh, Josh, if, do you want to say anything about your background? Uh, sure. I'm a paramedic. I've been involved with free aid for two, three years. Two years. Two to, yeah. two to three years. Two years. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been a paramedic for 15 years, and I teach statistics at the uh, University of Hartford in Connecticut. And been a libertarian That's for right. uh, for many years before that. Uh, 25, 30 years, something like that. <laughs> right. Well, we're all born right. born free, right? That's right. I mean, we are libertarians when we first come out of the womb. <laughs> um, then some of us lose it for a while, as I did, and then you know, recapture it like 16, 25. Right on. And this is uh, Michael Linscott. Uh, Michael is uh, one of our sort of lead organizers at Free Aid and has been with us volunteering for several years. And yeah, if, do you want to say now. over three years? Yeah, I'm with yeah. Free Aid over three years now. And uh, I used to be a former EMT, four years in the state of Massachusetts. Um, and with that experience, it was very easy for me to transition into this little niche that we have in the Liberty community, helping everyone else out that helps everyone else out. Yeah, people who are helping each other also need help from time to time. And uh, we're there. Posted up Agora Site 2 for the past few years. People keep strolling on in with basic camping injuries. Nothing too crazy. 
Yeah, hopefully nothing too crazy, although there have been some um, instances where we definitely needed to call in additional help, which we can talk about. But uh, first I just want to say a little more about my background in particular. Um, I mentioned that I've been with Free Aid since the beginning about five years ago. I'm actually a med school dropout. Uh, <laughs> that's my relevant <laughs> medical uh, medical expertise, if, if there is any. Um, I went to medical school from 2006 to 2008. And I also, um, after that, went to get a PhD in biochemistry. And then I realized that that career path was not doing it for me and I wasn't happy. So I changed and now I'm a voice actor. Um, but I do have sort of a, a little bit of a background in first aid. And especially during the time when I was um, thinking about this medical career, I was really interested in, like Josh said, the, the non-state solutions. You know, we, there would be so many, um, so many times when I was in medical school where it would just be like a foregone conclusion that universal health care provided by the state was going to be the solution to make sure that everybody's health needs got taken care of. And nobody seemed to be able to envision any other way that that could possibly happen. And also there was the licensing aspect of the medical profession, you know, that um, you have to have the proper paperwork to be able to help someone. Even if you have um, perhaps relevant skills, you know, like, um, and your license is not active, you can get in big trouble for that in some places. The concept of being a good Samaritan and just sort of helping out um, as you're able and as you're comfortable um, can create legal liability sometimes, which I think is a really unfortunate concept. Um, so, yeah, those ideas were just really interesting to me. How can we find some creative solutions to take care of people who need health care or who need first aid in, in a situation like this out in, out in camping at Fork Fest um, without, by completely voluntary means, without involving the coercion of the state and without, without requiring them to pay for it, you know, or to have insurance coverage or anything like that. And I think what's key there is probably the look for solutions part. Because um, it's too easy for us as libertarians to just say, let's fight back against this policy and this policy. But all our time in this negative mindset of push back here. Push, and we'll, okay, we'll build it once we're allowed to. Um, and it, it's just depressing. Yeah. Um, as opposed to, let's start building it now. Yeah. Let's, um, and I was saying this yesterday at the CPR class, but you know, I think it's, real, I think it's really, like, uh, really graphic to do this in the context of emergency medicine because it's an area where people feel so disempowered. People feel like the only people who can possibly know what to do in emergencies are people who wear their state-issued uniform with the right patch on the shoulder and the piece of metal on the chest that grants extra privileges and so forth. Um, and, even, and even private agencies that provide 911 tend to copy that same look because they know, and even it's not even private because it's really just, you know, the government has said you, you have the right to practice here. Nobody else can do what you do. Um, to empower people to feel like, especially when we get volunteers who are not medical professionals, and now they know, oh, I know what to do in an emergency too. I've learned a little bit, I've learned this skill, I've learned this skill, I've learned CPR. Each one of those is a little push back against this idea that the state is the ultimate expert. And it's a push back against the mindset of dependency that when it's life and death, we need to rely on the state. Yeah. Well said, Josh, I really love that. Um, Totally, and also I think it can create you know, those badges and those uniforms that we've all been so used to seeing since we were little kids, and um, those people being vested with this authority. You know, sometimes you, you can't always trust someone just because they have a uniform. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're always the most competent person around or that they're not gonna perhaps hurt you or injure you by accident. There's a lot of medical errors every year. And the people at the end of the day wearing those uniforms are, are only human. And whether they're human, whether they're wearing a uniform or not, whether they have a badge I or think not. Libertarians often have to remind you of the second part, right? <laughs> that, that they're still human? <laughs> yeah, that they're still human, exactly. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think maybe free aid, um, at least in my ideal world, is, is kind of humanizing the idea of, of um, medical care, you know, making it more about people participating in an exchange, people helping one another, than about a top-down system of control that's provided by someone else who you don't really know and who doesn't know you, but you trust them because they have this uniform and that's the signal. So I, I really like um, the community aspect that, that something like Free Aid creates as well.
To touch on um, what you said about using our certifications and we could be potentially putting ourselves in a dangerous situation if that's your livelihood. Um, I'm a former EMT, so this isn't really a huge concern for me. I'm not, I'm not worried about losing my livelihood because I have other means to do that now. Yeah. Um, but I kind of see it as a form of activism. And it might not be activism that people think of right off the bat if you say, hey, I'm an activist. Um, it's not filming police or doing other things that are along those lines. But um, yeah, we're all, we all feel very empowered by the organization that we're with. And um, we all feel it's very important to give back to the community that we feel has taught us a lot uh, to be individuals and how to conduct ourselves. And there's a lot of positive things in there. Yeah, I like I like the activism aspect that you mentioned, Michael. And um, just I guess to expand a little bit on that and what I was mentioning before about potential legal problems or whatever. What I meant from that is that I know in, it's different in every state and it's different in play whatever legal fiction you're, you happen to be standing in, you know, whatever <laughs> plot of land you happen to be on. But um, in some places, if you are a doctor or a licensed um, EMT or paramedic or some other kind of medical professional, if you see someone in need of help and you do not assist them, you can get in trouble. Um, and, then, and then in some places, if you are a lay person without any medical training and you see someone in trouble and you try to assist them, you can get in trouble. <laughs> well, the, and then for us, there's the additional layer of you're an EMT or a paramedic, but that really just entitles you to be someone else's license extender. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're not practicing under someone's license. But I think what reduces some of the liability is kind of another form of, uh, I, get, I don't know if you call it activism or negative activism, but the fact that at, at, uh, at, a, in an inst um, at an event like this, we are able to rely on people understanding our intentions to be good and not looking for how can I make money? Who can I sue if I twist my ankle? Yeah. Um, which is why I don't feel concerned about the issues that, that you're talking about. And first, you know, I tell people I'm not practicing a medical professional, but second, I, 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 the people around me, I expect to respect what we're trying to do mm -hmm. um, because we've, we've built really an um, intentional community. Yeah, absolutely. We we always do our best to make it the best. Not not me. It's my first fork fest. But <laughs> the community has built an you intentional have, You have helped build it <laughs> totally. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I think we always try to make it really clear that this is not um, a substitute. Free aid at pork fest is not a substitute for having a relationship with a physician that you trust and you can go to if you're sick. It's not a substitute for the emergency room at the hospital. You know, <laughs> we are just, it's volunteer first aid. And first aid is important because the scope is somewhat limited by what we can do. And volunteer is also important because it's provided on a voluntary basis. And, you know, uh, hopefully by extending that courtesy to people, you know, uh, they, they don't have this sort of um, antagonistic mindset where you know they're just looking for a lawsuit you know exactly. going into it right I mean, and you're and you're dealing with people of like mind you're dealing with people who understand the idea yeah have either of you either been sued by a patient or in your when you were practicing or when you were i guess in your line of work i was never exposed to any sort of legal issues mm -hmm. i have never been sued but i've been i've had uh, my record subpoenaed mm -hmm. and i've been subpoenaed while they're suing other people mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and in fact, some were involved in medical professions, but never me in particular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, it, it can and does happen, and free aid just, and I guess, I guess we're, we're not thinking too much about the legal context, but if, if we are, we're operating under sort of the, the good Samaritan idea, right. you know. And this week we've had several individuals who had had injuries that we know are beyond our scope, so we had no hesitation in either taking them to the hospital or having a family member take them to the hospital or yeah. if need be if it was a real emergency we could get the ambulance to come to us yeah um, I want to talk a little more about some specifics on that but uh, and without going into any patient details but um, another thing that I think free aid does at Porkfest is sort of a public safety kind of function mm -hmm. like we work with uh, we work with the security team to you know just handle mental health 
issues or people who have overindulged in various substances and maybe just need someone to keep them company because that does happen here at any festival um, and you know that person maybe that person doesn't need to you know go to the hospital or you know get reported to the police or anything like that they just need someone to sort of keep them company while they calm down a little bit and then they're gonna be fine um, so that's one of the things that we do but also you know we try to make people aware of just issues that are specific to this locale like ticks you know New Hampshire is a tick haven and especially in June <laughs> there's a, there have been cases of Lyme disease that have been contracted at Porkfest so we try to educate people about how to keep ticks um, off of themselves and how to you know remove them safely and everything I think we've successfully made people aware about ticks <laughs> we get asked about ticks all the time. If only the ticks would listen to us. Yes. <laughs> and stay off of the people. Not only the people, the dogs. <laughs> Not only the people, the dogs too. So that's one issue that's very like local, localistic, you know, and that we can, um, it's an example of an issue that we can help with because we know we're familiar with the local environment. We're, we're not some top-down bureaucracy from right. Florida that, does, that isn't familiar with the terrain <laughs> and the issues that Porkfest experiences. Um, you know, another thing, and I guess another example of that is uh, is sunburns. Like we always try to provide sunscreen, and <laughs> let's be honest, there's a lot of white people at Porkfest, <laughs> so you know we provide sunscreen. We provide, uh, you know, condoms that are free for people to take and people having sex. You know, have a good time as long as, you know, have a good time, and if it's there for you, if you want some. Uh, some help with protection there. As opposed to walking to every tent saying, here, take condoms. Yeah. <laughs> you must use these. Yeah, that's like the, uh, the Jehovah's Witness uh, condom evangelist. Would you like to hear the good news about condoms? <laughs> uh, actually, so free this year, I don't know if it's happened before, but we had a call that one of our volunteers responded to help a dog that was, something happened to the dog. One of our volunteers responded, it was bleeding, and they helped <coughs> stop the bleeding on a dog. So oh, wow. That may have been the first time for that. Yeah. So now we're moving beyond humans, helping animals as well. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I think some of the most important things we do, though, might not even be just the first aid things that we do at Porkfest or some of these other Liberty conventions that we attend. But um, we had a fundraising effort when there was a disaster in the Philippines, am yeah. I correct? In the Philippines, there was a typhoon yes. um, a couple of years ago, and there was a, a contact that Free Aid had over there, and uh, we raised Bitcoin. Oh, we haven't even really talked about this yet, but Free Aid is a Bitcoin-based organization. Um, so during that typhoon, Free Aid raised Bitcoin and um, sent it to the contact in the Philippines who then converted it to local currency and used it to purchase relief supplies like um, like rice and sandbags and shovel, like shovels and just... Water, things. medical Water. supplies. Yeah, the basics that people need during an emergency. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so yeah, we do the first aid, we've done some fundraising, we do CPR classes every pork fest. Um, usually we teach and we give people the skills, but we aren't able to give them a certification. We leave them with a, a pin, a little voluntary V mm -hmm. and a heart. Pin. Josh actually did was able to give people... Some yeah, this is the first yeah. year we were able to do uh, CPR class, thanks to Josh here. Yeah, this year we are giving out certifications to the, only those who want. I mean, out of 20 people who came, I think um, five or six signed up to get cards. The rest wanted to know the skill, which yeah. is perfectly fine, too. Yep. That's awesome. And yeah, one of the reasons that um, Free Aid had sort of a focus on cardiovascular <coughs> health, health and um, emergency uh, assist skills in a situation where someone goes into cardiac arrest is because uh, basically with every minute that passes after someone has a cardiac arrest, their chance of surviving goes down about 10%. So by the time you get to eight minutes passing by, 10 minutes after someone's heart has stopped, um, there's very low chance that they're gonna, they're gonna make it. And in, even in a big city like Boston or New York, um, response times for ambulances can be on that order of eight to 10 minutes. And it, you know, if there's not somebody nearby, and in a rural area like this, it could take 45 minutes, a half hour for an ambulance to arrive, if, especially if it's going to a really remote location. So if there's someone available to assist nearby, um, that can be really life-saving potentially. And so it's a way of empowering people to help their neighbors instead of relying on these services that are some often provided by the state. And there are communities experimenting, um, not, not 
uh, cities or states, but groups of people in these different areas experimenting with these ideas. I know there's an app um, that where you can download the app and you'll be notified if anyone calls 911 reporting cardiac arrest within two miles of you. Mm -hmm. And so if people sign up for the app, we know CPR, and there you go. Um, there's also the Peacekeeper app where you can uh, network with your neighbors and if there's an emergency like a fire or a any kind of dispute or a medical emergency, you can just hit a button on the app and it will alert all of the nearby neighbors that are in the area. So yeah, solutions like that, I think technology is going to continue to help with these problems. Yeah, Uber has been even talking about providing their drivers if they would like one with an AED. Oh. They did a study I found Ubers get to plead people in two minutes in New York City and wow. ambulances get there in eight minutes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, so a really interesting example of sort of market forces at work. Um, yeah, so I, I'm glad you mentioned the, the uh, CPR and AED skills uh, that Free Aid does because that's sort of an important part of our mission as well. Definitely. I think that that's one of the biggest influence. I mean, if you think about it, we had 20 people at that, um, at that class. If they're distributed kind of equally across this campground, that's a much larger impact on survival for someone who goes into cardiac arrest here at this campground than the fact that we're over there at that booth. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, between, if you think about just like the chain of contact to let the person over there know and they get up down here. Um, well, it's not just the people who are here at the pork fest, anybody in the pool. Right, yeah, yeah, the regular cool. the regular Rogers right. campground goers. Right. Yeah, if there was a medical emergency, we would not hesitate to help them as well. well. And they're probably are not uh, just those people either. I taught first aid for the American Red Cross for 10 years, including CPR programs when they first came out. I've been a lifeguard, I came to that pool, no problem. So there are other people out there that mm -hmm. yeah. you probably don't even know about. Right. Which is good. It's definitely the whole community. I've, I've gotten a strong feeling at Porkfest that everyone is pretty much looking out for everyone else. Um, yeah. Safety, health, um, people are indulging in substances, making sure they're not going, or not having a bad time, we'll say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's kind of what we're getting at, just like, it, that diffuse effect is much more important yes. than centralized. Yeah. So, so we have not had a cardiac arrest at Porkfest, even though we're super prepared for it if that does happen. <laughs> <laughs> and think, you know. yeah. prepared so you, you don't have it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, that's that's lucky. Thankfully there has not been that kind of event. But there have been a couple of um, serious incidents like uh, a case of anaphylactic shock with a guy who had a, a food allergy um, that ate at one of the food vendors and didn't know that there was an allergen in there. Um, there was also you know, some pretty serious lacerations and insect bites, like some, I've seen some nasty kind of spider bites, you know. Yeah. Um, also, you know, children getting injured pretty seriously. Yeah. People, some people needed stitches and things like that. Dealing with children is, so when the children come in, more times than not, it's the parents that are more worried or yeah. upset or mm -hmm. flustered than the kids are. Yeah. You talk to the kids, you sit them down, you give them a Band-Aid with a little a heart or a superhero on it, and they're happy. Yeah. They're all better. Um, just the parents down and calm them down? Yeah. The, happy the parents, you the definitely parents just have to reassure to. them <laughs> and help any way you can. Yeah. So he has multiple patients when a parent brings a child over. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so with those serious instances, I mean, it was interesting to see. We, um, you know, we either helped the person get transported to the nearest medical center, which is actually just two miles away. Um, we're really lucky that we have that around. Um, or there, in some cases, there were ambulances called in to Porkfest, yeah. and uh, it was it was kind of interesting to see how the the staff of those ambulances re reacted to free aid. I think they were really surprised to see that there was an organized effort to sort of, I guess, triage people at the campground or you right. know help people immediately who needed it, help at least get them to the medical center. So I, I'm sure they're not really used to seeing much of that at festivals. We have a question from the audience. Yeah, have you ever received any negative responses from quote unquote medical professionals <sighs> for being involved in what you do? We, we have definitely received negative responses for 
being a Bitcoin organization and, <laughs> and having our funds in Bitcoin, and we can talk about that a little bit here in a, in a moment. Um, most of the doctors and healthcare professionals who are not part of Free Aid that we've met at the, at the events that didn't know about Free Aid but just met us there were overwhelmingly supportive and wanted to even join us and volunteer with us. Um, we don't do that much outreach, I guess, to to the people beyond the Liberty community. Right. So I, I don't think we've had too much opportunity to be exposed um, to people beyond that. But have you guys ever had any experience with that? I've talked to other friends of mine who've had certifications and whatnot. Um, they're not, there's not a negative outlook on it, but there's definitely worry on their part because they have certification and they make their livelihood by providing emergency medical service. Yeah. So if anything were to happen, it's just the, the pros and cons, the, the risk outweighs the reward. Yeah. So they make the decision. It's not really a negative thing, they just say, it's not for me. Right. Yeah, I mean, and that is, it, it can be kind of a challenge. We've been on sort of a shoestring budget. <laughs> like, yeah. a lot of our supplies have been donated. Um, you know, our budget is completely donations. And a lot of our volunteer, like, we don't pay to bring people to Porkfest. Our volunteers come to Porkfest because they want to come and they pay for their own trip. I wish we could I wish we could pay for people's trips, but we don't really have the funds for that either yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> so, um, You'd so, like to donate money. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, that's the thing. I, I, I live in a rural community, and most all of their services, rescue squads, fire department, everything is volunteer. Yeah. These people also have work jobs outside of outside of the, the fire department stuff. So yeah, it's a community thing. Yeah, it's true. Like a lot of rural communities do provide, do have volunteer fire departments. I think I read a statistic once that 90% of the towns in America have volunteer fire departments. And people are not, it's not their full-time job. They're not getting a pension. They're not really even maybe getting a paycheck. And uh, it's the same thing with free aid. So. Like we, since we have day jobs, we're not gonna be uh, like taking their jobs, you know. Like the, right, right. Like, uh, like the, I don't think the uh, the EMT union has much to worry about from us. We're just we're just sort of help, helping and supporting, even supporting them, you know, uh, by being here at Porkfest where they might not be and couldn't really help out and respond in the scene of a in the scene of an injury or accident. Yeah. I, I have not gotten a negative reaction, but mostly. You ask where you're going. I just say, well, you know, I'm a medical group, I, and I'm really going to do it. I'll, I'll report back after I turn in the paperwork to the uh, Heart Association. Yeah. <laughs> CPR class. Yeah, I mean, when people ask me about pork fest, just in general, I say I'm going to a camping festival, and people understand that. I say Libertarian Burning Man. Yeah, that's that, that's a good way to describe it. Now, at Burning Man, we've actually sort of studied like what do they do at Burning Man for um, for event. Uh, medical help or security, and they have the they have uh, the Black Rock Rangers at Burning Man that sort of um, have wilderness first aid skills, and they've got a specific climate that they're dealing with as well. They're out in the desert, so they probably see a lot of hydration issues and heat stroke and sand burns and injury, skin injuries, you know, from the sand that sticks to people out there. Um, so I mean, I think they're pretty well equipped to deal with their locale. Um, there's also at, there's also companies that you can hire at some events. Michael, you found one of these a while back, where you can hire a firm that basically brings in a bunch of medical help, like uh, people, EMTs and paramedics and things like that. Um, but they're quite expensive. I mean, they're for like baseball games and things like that. You don't need to do that. If you ever want to know about doing large events with volunteer help in the medical area, talk to the Society for Creative Anachronism Chirurgeons Corps. They're used to handling up to ten to twelve thousand people at an event for two weeks. Right. So and they're so national and international, so they'd be able to tell you how to go about doing that. Cool. So yeah, the Society for Creative Anachronism is like a historical reenactment, uh, medieval kind of pl players, I guess. And uh, they've it's they've found a solution which I didn't know about. Um, so that's cool. So yeah, I think I think um, like like my boyfriend Brian Sovereign likes to say. Um, <laughs> The solution lies in localism, you know, like people within 
each community know its needs the best mm -hmm. and they're going to be able to solve the unique challenges of an event like whether it be Burning Man or Pork Fest or SCA event. They're going to know what challenges are going to come up and be best equipped to handle them. So I really, another thing I like about Free Aid is that it's decentralized. We don't, it's not a top-down organization. We make decisions by consensus. We have a volunteer group and we have sort of people who lead, you know, take the lead on different roles. But um, it's, it's very much a, a collective rather than a hierarchical kind of organization structured as a, as a collective style. I think it basically it has to be. I mean, if you're going to force something on me, I'm not going to show up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If good. I disagree enough. We, we, we like that. It's <laughs> a good we, attitude. We have the right of individual secession. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I think people volunteer because it gives them meaning. You know, we're not doing it for a paycheck. It, we volunteer because we enjoy helping people and the meaning that it, it gives us. Right, guys? I mean, it's, yeah. it's one of the most gratifying things to help someone out and then have them come back and be sincerely genuine and thank me and yeah. it just makes me feel really good inside and it's worth it. Absolutely. Um, but like for the future of Free Aid even, I, I see us, I see our, our base as our medical skills mm -hmm. but I feel like we could be so much more, we could be a charitable organization in a, in the very broad sense Yeah. and really the sky's the limit. Um, we can go in any which direction. We've been building up to this point where we're at now and we have X number of volunteers, and you know we show up at events regularly, and um, yeah, just very excited for the future. Yeah, me too. I mean, I think that would be a great note to end on. Um, I did just want to say a little bit about Bitcoin. So, like, we we operate in Bitcoin. We receive. Yes, let's talk about Bitcoin. Yeah, let's talk about Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of my podcast. <laughs> um, Free Aid didn't start out as a Bitcoin organization because we started in 2010 when Bitcoin wasn't really, I mean, it was it, it was in existence, but it was not in common use among the Liberty community. Um, so, but since the beginning, Free Aid has always been really accepting of donations of like silver and alternative currencies and um, you know, copper. We've, we've received copper rounds, silver rounds as donations. I don't think we've ever received any gold, but I mean, would certainly be open to <laughs> taking it, <laughs> taking we'll it take off your, your hands. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's really cool to see, like, you know, the enthusiasm for alternative currencies among the Porkfest community. And um, so when we, we started finding out about Bitcoin, it just seemed like such a natural fit because um, Bitcoin is a decentralized uh, digital currency. And Free Aid is a decentralized meat space organization. And uh, <laughs> with Bitcoin, we saw just a ton of advantages, like being able to receive donations from anywhere in the world and send them to anywhere in the world. Like we sent funds to the Philippines in Bitcoin. And um, I'm not even sure if it's possible to send PayPal funds from the US to Philippines. Uh, you cannot send uh, PayPal funds to, there's about 69 countries in the world where like, Egypt, Afghanistan, um, even I think some places in Africa, which could potentially be disaster areas or places that might need funds raised to help out with natural disasters or whatever. So Bitcoin really has a lot of advantages in those areas. And uh, the only real issue with Bitcoin is receiving it out in the woods. Sometimes the, wadis, the Wi-Fi is a little spotty here at Porkfest. <laughs> Um, I was kind of wondering about that yeah. before I came. But this year it seems to be uh, much improved. And the great thing about having a Bitcoin address is that we can receive donations from anyone outside of Forkfest or, or later when you get home. And there's transparency. You know, people can see sort of what we have in our balance. We just moved to a multi-signature uh, system. So we, we now hold our funds in a multi-sig uh, Bitcoin wallet. We're having a little loud noise here. Construction or something? It's going on. No, it's the construction of a, a full of coffee, which is oh, that's an right. excellent thing to <laughs> make constructive. So. Yeah, so we've, uh, we store our funds in a multi-signature Bitcoin account where uh, several members of our organization have keys. And when we have expenses to reimburse, um, you know, just more than one member will have to approve it. And so there's some accountability, you know, sort of within the organization, just, oh, you know, are you sure you want to improve this expense? We've never really had anything that we disputed, right. but um, 
but it's nice to be able to have that process be decentralized of uh, funding and reimbursing expenses. And that multi sig is really good because it adds just the, just another level of security to yes. our funds. Yeah. And our donors are really the only yeah. reason why we're able to do what we do. Um, and every year we've been able to expand a little bit because of them. We've been able to get a nicer chair that reclines so we can have people lie back if needed if they're we're working on the lower extremities mm -hmm. or we got a cot last year if someone needs to take a little nap or just cool out for a little bit. Totally. Um, this year we brought a big big jug of a uh, five gallon five gallon uh, water jug and anyone that's dehydrated or whatever needs to come by and refill instead of on Agora Valley they're selling water. <laughs> right on. Cool, so uh, should we end off here? I, how are we doing on time? What's up? Cool, okay. Well, um, thanks so much for listening to this, and thanks for anybody who's going to be watching this later online. If you want to find out more about Free Aid, uh, we do sort of maintain a blog. I mean, not our day job again, but we, <laughs> we, we try to blog once in a while at yeah. fr33aid.com. Free Aid is pronounced free, but it's spelled FR33, so FR33AID.com. Our Bitcoin donation address is there, and if you want to volunteer with Free Aid, if you're interested in getting involved, we'd love to have new volunteers join us. You can contact us through the contact form on our website that says volunteer, and just put in um, info for yourself, and we'll, we'll hook you up. <laughs> Many hands make play work. Totally. <laughs> so thanks, thanks Josh and Michael for being a part of Free Aid and for doing this panel. I really, um, you know, appreciated having you here to to talk about this with everybody. Thank you, well, thank you for sending me up. Yeah. Thank you.